Among the rich material in la graphique et le traitement graphique de l'information, Jacques Breton discusses the presentation of data matrices with a particular view to seriation. This is a tribute to Breton's graphical data analysis. Breton uses a small data set on hotel occupancy data and tells a story. A hotel director finds a way to represent his data, rearranges it, and of course becomes successful. In abstract terms, a Breton matrix is a matrix of displays. To fix ideas, think of a data matrix, variable by case, with real valued variables. For each variable, draw a bar chart by case. Highlight all bars representing a value above some threshold. Variables are collected in a matrix to display the complete dataset. Using coordinates in parallel means that you are not restricted to the limitations of Cartesian coordinates. By convention, Breton shows variables in rows and cases in columns. To avoid boundary effects of perception, the data may be repeated cyclically. So data for the 12 months of a year appear in 24 columns. Breton matrices are not restricted to this display. For example, Breton gives a matrix representing vowel schemes of hawk songs. You can easily spot yodelers. Program development needs a time perspective. In 1996 we knew that Mac OS was to be superseded by OS X. For Windows we expected NT to be there some time. Our preference was on Unix, but the Linux distribution was not ripe then. So we decided to use Niklaus Wirth's Oberon operating system to bridge the gap. We built Voyager, our system, on top of Oberon. Voyager comes in several variants. Blackbox is an Oberon implementation using Mimicry. Under macOS it appears as a Mac application, under Windows it looks like a Windows program. Voyager 2 is using the Blackbox Oberon implementation. Voyager 1 is using the original ETH implementation. This demonstrates Niklaus Wirth's economy. The classical Oberon interface comes with a screen with two tracks. A user track is the target for user-defined output. A system track is used for system in and output. All areas are live. You can submit information from all areas. Any text can be submitted as a command. There's no special command line. If you want to, you can hide commands in a button or menu, but you do not need to. Characters can be output elements, but any glyphs can be as well. A complete button matrix can be an output element, interaction included. Open Oberon, find a command to load your data, mark the insertion point where you want it and execute the command. If you want to, you can adjust the placement or geometry. Datasets rarely come in the format you want. The Baton implementation allows easy transitions. You can either choose a transformation when you read in the data, or you use a command, either as a textual command anywhere in the display space, or in a menu, or in a button, or some gadget. In our implementation, you can do the adjustment interactively. The segments in the upper right corner of the Baton matrix display allow you to switch between these options or transpose the matrix. The hotel data come in the format we want. No adjustment is needed. In the Voyager Berton implementation, we focus on two attribute classes, geometry and color. In the classical Berton display, height is used to reflect the value of a data element, color is used as an indicator for values exceeding some limit. We assume that the data have been transformed to some score, allowing comparison between variables of different scale. Data or data scores are translated to visual attributes. The same data may give very different impressions when rendered with different attributes. Recall that different observers may have different perceptions. True interactivity is not needed here, but a timely feedback is helpful to allow exploration of attributes. As Breton pointed out, the indexing is arbitrary. You can rearrange rows and columns to reveal the information of interest. In an interactive environment, rearrangement can be done by dragging variables and or cases to a new place. If you run a hotel, of course, the percentage of hotel occupation and the duration of visits are most interesting for you. Move these variables to the top of the display and rearrange the other variables by similarity or dissimilarity to these target variables. Time points have a natural order, no rearrangement is used. The main point is that when the arrangement of rows and columns is arbitrary, some permutation may help to reveal information. The typical situation is to select scores and display attributes and then search for an optimal or good seriation. This is the alternative to using interactive rearrangement. 
With a matrix layout, the actual placement is specified by permutation of rows and of columns. Formally, an approach may be to select some metrics for the distance and maybe a scale for the variable. For real-world data, missing and out-of-range data are common and we have to take care of them. Of course, scale matters. Some common transformations are provided on the fly. As required by the context, these are available by row or by column. Finding a sequence, as for example sorting by correlation to some target variable, is a sizable problem and can be covered in n log n time. Finding an optimal sequence minimizing successive distances is calling for a traveling salesman. You should either be happy with an approximative solution, or restrict to small problems, or be prepared for long waiting time. But if you have a good solution, you should ask, does it really matter to find an optimal one? In the context of interactive plateau matrices, the key concept is that of a selection. In the basic access, we select a variable or case and move it, thus defining a permutation. More generally, we may select any combination of cases and variables. Selections may be moved as a whole, collapsed or replaced by a surrogate variable. We may keep classical statistical models in our mind. In these models, selections have roles. In a regression context, for example, variables may be regresses or response. In Breton, this is supported by supplying two types of selection. It is tempting to go beyond classical regression. As a proof of concept, we implemented a nearest neighbor smoothing in Breton. Neighborhoods are understood as cell neighborhood in the matrix. As usual in regression, this leads to fit matrix and a residual matrix. Both are Breton matrices linked to the original data matrix. Dynamic linking is preserved. Classical statistical methods may be reflected in a Breton setting. Regression and classification may serve as starting points. Classification and regression trees have thrown a new light on these problems. In principle, CART is a higher dimensional strategy. In the Breton context, we deliberately restrict ourselves to a two-dimensional embedding. CART suggests to look for partitions, or patches, rectangular areas that allow for an economic local model. More recent methods use family of partitions and combine the results for each. CART uses a simple strategy, splitting one variable at a point. However, this leads to a fragmentation of the data material, dividing it by half for each factor, and gives a corresponding penalty in terms of variance. Friedman has pointed out that this fragmentation is not necessary. Instead of one set of patches, you can have two, one used for estimation and a second one, possibly different, used to apply the estimation for fitting. You want to keep the first one large to control variance and the second one small to reduce bias. This asks for pairs of patches. You can have a family of these patches, possibly overlapping. Recursive partitioning is not required. Feel free to work with families of patches. In 1996 our preferred environment was Oberon, used as a client under macOS. Our system, Voyager, including Baton, is based on Oberon. Our 1996 version still works.